who would win in a fight between Captain Olimar and his Pikmin and a piranha plant. I'm Ink and this is Smash Bracket, the show where your favorite video game characters compete in a giant animated tournament to figure out who's canonically the strongest. With that aside, let's get right into things with our very first fighter, Captain Olimar. Olimar lived on the tranquil planet Hokotate with his wife, his daughter, and his son, Smallimar. No, I'm not making that up, it's real. But one day, on an interstellar voyage, a meteor slammed into Olimar's ship and sent him careening down to Earth. His ship was totally ruined, and the life he had with his family flashed before his eyes. Not only was he stranded on an alien planet, but the air itself was toxic. Without his ship, Olimar would die in just 30 days. Fortunately for the captain, although he was stranded, he wasn't alone. Through all the dangerous flora and fauna, Olimar discovered a small alien race of creatures which he named Pikmin, due to the fact that they looked just like one of Olimar's favorite snacks, Pik Pik Carrots. These red Pikmin proved to be invaluable allies to Olimar, and helped him fight off dangerous enemies, grow additional Pikmin, and recover all 30 missing pieces of Olimar's ship. Along the way, Olimar discovered more and more breeds of Pikmin, each with their own special properties. Red Pikmin were immune to fire, blue Pikmin could breathe underwater, yellow Pikmin were immune to electricity and could carry bombs, white Pikmin could spit acid and were poisonous to anyone who ate them, and purple Pikmin were big, chonky boys who were 10 times as strong as normal Pikmin. Future explorers would go on to find even more species of Pikmin that could fly or be more durable than normal, but they all had one thing in common. They loved Olimar and were loyal to him no matter what. Thanks to their help, Olimar was able to fully repair his spaceship and return home, only to come back a few years later to raise funds to pay off a company debt. Now, as you watch Olimar collect treasure here, see if you notice anything strange. You see it? Alright, let me show you. Olimar is freaking small! He's collecting things like a battery or a bottle cap and they look absolutely massive in comparison to him. That's because Olimar stands only 3 fourths of an inch tall, not even 2 centimeters. So what looks in game to be Herculean feats of Pikmin's strength and speed tend to be less than what you'd expect. For example, when he blitzes around the battlefield in intense combat, he's actually only moving 0.3 miles per hour. That's not to say he doesn't have some impressive feats though. For example, he himself is physically strong enough to throw Pikmin so hard that it shatters crystals, while his Pikmin are strong enough to launch a fellow Pikmin into the air for 8 minutes. This would require the force of 1.8 kilojoules per centimeter squared. And when you apply this to the 10 times stronger purple Pikmin, that means that they're hitting with 18 kilojoules per centimeter squared, which is like 6.5 times the impact of a sniper round. The Pikmin can also survive this energy, which is impressive when you realize that Olimar can withstand attacks that kill his Pikmin in a single hit. That's not all he can survive either. Thanks to his nifty spacesuit, Olimar can live through otherwise lethal conditions. It allows him to breathe otherwise toxic air, provides him with a variety of resistances such as heat, electricity, poison, and water. Oh, and it's also got this cute little antenna thing that allows him to communicate with his ship. The teams also have alternative methods of attack that don't rely on pure power. For example, the acid of a white Pikmin can melt through solid steel, and Olimar is capable of burping on his opponents to petrify them. Alright, yeah, technically this is called bitter spray, but let's be real. Do you hear that? That That's a burp. Similarly, Olimar can fart out the spicy spray to enhance the speed of his Pikmin. What is this game? And all of his strength and versatility is made usable through Olimar's mastery of tactics and command. Not only can he store 10,000 of each Pikmin, but we've seen him command huge amounts of Pikmin at once in this short animation, far surpassing the limit of 100 that we see in normal gameplay. And the control over this number of Pikmin makes Olimar a huge threat to otherwise ginormous enemies. I don't care if he's an inch tall, if I saw 70,000 Pikmin rushing at me all at once, I would just quit. Nothing in life is worth dealing with that, they win, it's over, good day sir. That about sums it up for Olimar himself, but for some fun contrast, let's take a look at his ship. Now, keep in mind, he never uses this for combat, and it's not going to be something he ever resorts to in a fight, but given the number of people I've seen bring it up, it's something that I want to talk about. His ship can automatically guard itself from attacks, it has a super light speed warp drive, it can create energy by warping space-time itself, oh, and it has a Nova Blaster that, according to its promotional brochure, can blow up stars. Yeah, okay. Now, to be fair, Olimar himself is skeptical of that last claim, but it's still hilarious to consider a tiny one-inch man warping through space at superluminal speeds, blasting apart stars while using his trusty massage machine. 
Anyway, that's enough of that fever dream of a spaceship. I just wanted to bring it up with how many people talk about it. Uh, it, it blows my mind. With that said, it's time to get into our next fighter for the day, who, funny enough, kind of looks like a Mario-inspired take on a Pikmin boss. Everyone, give it up for Piranha Plant. <laughs> Piranha Plant is a weird case, because rather than being a singular character, it's an entire species of plant that spread itself through the Mushroom Kingdom. And there have been so many variations of this plant, that the only way to truly do it justice is combining each into a single version. Now, I normally like to start off these analyses with narrative about the character's wants and motivations, but forgive me for skipping past that, this is, uh, th this is just a plant. Although I guess saying just a plant might be doing it a real disservice. These plants are capable of some crazy, crazy things. Take its appearance in Paper Mario, for example, where it casually burrows through the ground at 98 and a half miles per hour. When that's combined by its ability to increase its speed by a factor of eight while playing tennis, this brings its speed up to Mach 1. The plants are also strong enough to survive hits from Yoshi, who can put out attacks strong enough to shatter crystal. Plants also got its fair share of status effect immunities from its time in Super Mario RPG, such as being immune to transmutation, stat reduction, being put to sleep, being poisoned, fear induction, and sealing of its attacks. Plant isn't just tough, but it can also dish out a serious beating as well. It can shoot electricity, poison, ice, spiky balls, and fire hot enough to instantly melt blocks of ice. In order to melt blocks this quickly, the fire would need to have an energy of 125 kilojoules per centimeter squared. That's like 54% the caloric energy within a strip of bacon. Or, to put it more boringly, half the power of a car hitting you at highway speeds. You happy? Fine. Just like any good Mario character, the plant's got plenty of weird stuff up its sleeves. Or stocks, I guess. It can transmute its foes into mushrooms and scarecrows, it can put them to sleep, it can fly, and it's got a laser gun, which it can use to shoot enemies while turning into a massive teleporting planetoid. And there you go, that was the shortest analysis I've ever done, I think. Turns out that there's just not too much to say about an entire species of plant. Go figure. But with that said, it's time to get into our fight. First though, this channel could really use your help. We're finally picking up some steam and momentum with our views, and if we can keep this going, the channel's gonna grow a lot faster than it's been doing before. If you wanna help, there's three things that you can do for free that would make a huge difference. Number one, when you watch a video, watch it all the way through to the end. This helps YouTube's recommendation algorithm that functions off of watch time. Number two, watch another video after this one. When you watch three videos back to back, it seriously increases the likelihood of YouTube recommending our videos to people with similar watch history. And number three, share this video with a friend. That's kind of self-explanatory. But anyway, there's my little spiel about views and the algorithm and helping us. But with that aside, let's get into our fight and figure out who will advance on to the next round of the Smash Bracket and who will be eliminated. Let's get into it.
And there you go. This fight is somewhat of a no-brainer when looking at things side by side, unfortunately. Now, I can't fault anyone for thinking that Olimar would take this when looking at the things in his games or assuming that his ship would be used, but when limiting him to the fighting styles that we see in-game and the animations, and when taking his size into account, Olimar just couldn't measure up. Literally. Not only was Plant dozens and dozens of times taller than Olimar, but he was also 25 and a half thousand times faster than him, and about 7 times stronger than him, and about 45 and a half times more durable. If that wasn't bad enough, Plant also had certain abilities that Olimar just never had to face before. But Piranha Plant also negated Olimar's other best win conditions, such as poisoning him with his White Pikmin or Petrification, both of which he could resist due to his immunities in Super Mario RPG. While Olimar does have some amount of flame resistance, it's just not on the same scale. For example, look how long these flames take to burn the single leaf on this Pikmin. It's just... it's just not the same. Piranha Plant is using a large fireball to instantly melt ice, whereas the fire that Olimar takes is more comparable to the flame of a lighter. Olimar is likely a far more skilled fighter, but there's only so much you can do when you're going up against such a powerful opponent. Even with tens of thousands of Pikmin for backup, Piranha Plant is just, surprisingly, a very legitimate contender and combatant. At the end of the day, Piranha Plant is the winner and will be moving on to the next round of the Smash Bracket. Who will he fight? I got no clue what to do with him here, being totally honest. Send, send help. Next time on the Smash Bracket.